Hi, welcome to the Magic of Math, where we master math one video at a time. Today, I have a video lesson on how to find the volume of a cone. Our objectives today are that you will find the volumes of cones, and you will find the height or radius of a cone given its volume. Here's the question I'd like you thinking about today as we proceed through the lesson. What is the relationship between the volume of a cone and the volume of a cylinder? So in the previous video in this playlist, we learned how to find the volume of a cylinder. Today, we're going to learn about finding the volume of a cone and how it's related to the volume of a cylinder. First, let's talk about what a cone is. A cone is a three-dimensional figure with one circular base that is connected by a curved surface to a single point. So unlike a cylinder, a cylinder has two circular bases that are parallel. Here's an image of a cone. We have our circular base, which is our circle. And this one, you could turn this, invert this, and flip it around so that the base was like what you would think about on the table. But it could be like this, like you hold. Imagine the paper that goes around a sugar cone. And here's our radius. It goes a straight line from the center of the circular base to the outer edge, which is our circumference. And then a cone has height. And it goes from that single point where the curved surface meets all the way up to the base, which is perpendicular. So that is our height of our cone. And then we have our radius of our circular base. Now let's talk about how this relates to the volume of a cylinder. So in a cylinder, we have our two circular bases. We have our radius and we have our height. So now when we talk about a cone, if I take this cone and I fill it with water and I pour it into this into the cylinder, assuming that the height are the same and the radii are the same. So same radius, same height. I'm going to fill this cone all the way up to the level to the top and I'm going to pour it into my cylinder. And that's what would happen. Now I'm gonna take a second cone, same size, fill it with water, and pour it into my cylinder. That's where I'm at now. I'm gonna take a third cone, fill it with water so that it is completely full, and pour it into the cylinder, and here's what happens. It fills up. So three cones filled with water with the same radius and the same height as the cylinder it will take three of those cones to fill the cylinder. So a cone is one third the size of the volume of a cylinder. So we have a ratio of one to three. So the ratio of the volumes of a cone and a cylinder with the same radius and the same height is one to three. So if I take this cone and I look at the cylinder, we're gonna say that if this has a radius of three and this has a radius of three, and the cone has a height of five, and the cylinder has a height of five, we're gonna compare it with numerical values. I'm gonna compare the volumes in terms of pi. So this volume I'm telling you is 15 pi. You'll learn how to calculate that in a minute. The cylinder is 45 pi. Remember we learned that the radius squared, so three times three is nine, times five is 45 times pi. So our volume of this cylinder with the same height and radius of this cone is 45 pi. If we write our ratio of 15 pi to 45 pi, each are divisible by pi, giving us, and then they're both divisible by 15. So when I do that in simplest form, it's a ratio of one to three. The volume of the cylinder is three times that of the cone. Another way to look at that is the cone is one third the volume of the cylinder. Now we're gonna use that idea to come up with our formula for the volume of a cone. So here we have our formula for the volume of a cone. It is one third of the area of the base multiplied by the height. So as when we did our cylinder, we knew that the volume was pi r squared, the area of our base times its height. And now we just learned that to find the volume of a cone, we know that it's gonna be one third of the cylinder. So one third, the area of its base times its height. So one third of that. Now let's use it. We're gonna find the volume of a cone that has a radius of nine inches and a height of six inches, and we're gonna use 3.14 for pi. 
So here is our cone. We're told that this cone has a radius of nine inches. So let's label our diagram. And we're told that it has a height of six inches. So we're gonna label that here as well. And here's our formula, one third, the area of our base, pi r squared, because it's a circle, multiplied by the height. So we're gonna put in what we know for values. We know that our radius is nine, so we're gonna square nine, r squared is nine squared, and our height here is six. Here's our height. So now you're gonna use your calculator, and here's how you would do this in your calculator. Nine squared first, so nine times nine, times six, times 3.14, and then divide everything by three. When you wanna find one third of something, you're dividing it into three equal sections. So when you use your calculator, you should get 508 and 68 hundredths. And we're gonna give our units, and that was inches cubed. Now it's your turn. I would like you to pause the video here and find the volume of a cylinder that has a radius of seven inches and a height of 15 inches using 3.14 for pi. Go ahead and pause, come back when you're done. Welcome back. So we're gonna label what we know. We have a radius of seven inches, we have a height of 15 inches, and we have our formula, one third the area of the base times the height. So let's plug in what we know. R, our radius is seven, so seven squared, and our height is 15. Now use your calculator. Seven squared, so seven times seven, times 15, times 3.14, divide by three. And you should have gotten 769 and three tenths. And don't forget to add your units, it's inches cubed. Now let's talk about finding the volume of a cone using the diameter. We're asked to find the volume of a cone that has a diameter of four inches and a height of 11 inches using 3.14 for pi. And now these instructions say to round to the nearest hundredth if necessary. So we're gonna start with our labeling our cone. We have a diameter of four. Remember diameter goes from one edge through the center to the opposite edge. We have a height of 11 perpendicular to our base. And we wanna note that if we know that our diameter is four, our radius is half of that, which is two. Now we're ready for our formula. One third, the area of our circular base times the height. So we're gonna plug in what we know. Our radius is two, so two squared, and our height is 11. So now we're going to use our calculator and we're gonna multiply two times two, which is four, times 11, times 3.14 for pi, and divide by three, and you get 46 and five hundredths. Don't forget your units, inches cubed. Now it's your turn. I would like you to find the volume of the cylinder that has a diameter of 12 inches and a height of 30 inches. Use 3.14 for pi and round to the nearest hundredth if necessary. Please pause now. Welcome back. Let's see how you did. So here's a cone, I'm gonna draw a picture. I have a diameter of 12 inches. Remember, diameter goes through the center from one edge to the other. I have a height of 30 inches, and I need to know my radius. So if my diameter is 12, my radius is half of that and six. Our formula is one third the area of our circular base pi r squared times h. Plugging in what we know for radius and height, our radius is six squared, height is 30. So six times six times 30 times 3.14 and divide by three gives you 1,130 and four tenths. And our unit is inches, so inches cubed. Now let's talk about finding the height of a cone when we're given the volume. So we're gonna find the height and we don't know our height, and we're given the radius of three, and our height is h, because we don't know it, and we're gonna put in our volume formula. They've given us a volume of 37.68, so we're gonna plug that in, replacing v, our volume, with the number they gave us. One third, they said to use 3.14 for pi. Our radius was three, so three squared, 
and h is what we don't know. So now we're going to simplify this right side. We're going to do one third of three squared. Well, three squared is nine. One third of that is three. So three times 3.14 is 9.42 h, and it's equal to our volume of 37 and 68 hundredths. To solve for h, we're going to undo multiply by divide by 9.42. What we do to one side, we must do to the other. So we're going to divide this, and we get that our height is 4, and that is 4 inches. Now it's your turn. I would like you to find the height of the cone with a radius of 2 inches and a volume of 16 pi cubic inches. Go ahead and pause now. Welcome back. So let's label our cone. We have a radius of 2 inches, and we were told that it has a volume of 16 pi. So this volume was given to us in what we call in terms of pi. So we're going to start with our formula, and we have our unknown that we're looking for is height. So we're going to put 16 pi in for our volume, and one third pi, we're going to leave pi in terms of pi, not, it didn't say to use 3.14, our radius squared, so 2 squared, and h, our height, we don't know. That's what we're solving for. So I notice that both sides of this equation have the symbol pi. So I can divide both sides by pi. Here, 2 squared is 4. 4 times 1 third is 4 thirds. So this side numerically simplifies to 4 thirds pi times h. Now let's divide each side by pi to eliminate that symbol. And now we have 4 thirds h. Well, the inverse of multiplying h by 4 thirds is to multiply both sides by the reciprocal, which is 3 fourths. When I do that, any number multiplied by its reciprocal is 1, giving us 1 h on the right. So that means we need to do 3 fourths of 16. Well, 16 divided by 4 is 4. 4 times 3 is 12. So our height here is 12. If you're using a calculator, you could do 3 times 16 divided by 4. And our height is 12 inches. Now, let's find the radius of a cone. When we are given that it has a height of 9 inches and a volume of 125 cubic inches, we're asked to use 3.14 for pi, and if necessary, round to the nearest tenth. So let's label our diagram here, our cone. We don't know our radius. That's our unknown. So we're going to use r, because we're looking to find the radius. Now we're going to label our height. We're told that the height of the cone is 9, and we need our volume formula. They told us that it's 125 cubic inches for volume, so we're going to plug that in for v, keep our one-third, pi, they've asked us to use 3.14. We don't know our radius, so r squared stays, and we're going to multiply by our height that was given to us of 9. So 1 third of 9 is 3. 3 times 3.14 is 9.42. We want to isolate our variable, so we're going to undo multiply by 9.42 and divide both sides of this equation by 9.42. 125 divided by 9.42 is 13.3, again, nearest tenth. Now, to solve for r, we're going to undo squaring by finding the square root of each side. Whatever I do to one side, I must do to the other. The square root of r squared is r, and the square root of 13.3 to the nearest tenth is 3.6 inches. Now it's your turn. I would like you to find the radius of a cone that has a height of 7 inches and a volume of 593 and 46 hundredths cubic inches using 3.14 for pi and, if necessary, rounding to the nearest tenth. Go ahead and pause now. Welcome back. So here's our diagram. We're going to label our radius r because that's what we don't know, and we are told that we have a height of 7 inches and we're going to put our volume formula here and replace v with 593.46, that's our volume, and our radius is unknown, so r squared stays, and our height was given as 7. So now we're going to multiply 7 times 3.14 and divide by 3, 
and rounding to the nearest tenth gives us 7.3. To solve for r squared, we're going to undo multiply by 7.3 and divide both sides of the equation by 7.3. Using your calculator, divide, and you should get 81.3 equals r squared. So the inverse of squaring is square root, so we're going to find the square root of each side and determine that the radius r is 9 inches rounded to the nearest tenth. Now let's look at a real world problem. The dentist handed you a paper cup in the shape of a cone that had a diameter of 3 inches and a height of 5 inches and it was 80% full of water. How many cubic inches of water were in the cup? I'm gonna ask you to pause now and come back when you're ready to check your answer. Welcome back. So here's our solution. First, let's draw a picture. Here's my paper cup. It has 80% full of water. We have a diameter of three, three inches, and we have a height of five inches. So we can find the volume first. First, we need to know our radius. So if our diameter was three, our radius is half of three, which is 1.5. Here is our volume formula for a cone. Plugging in what we know, we're gonna use 3.14 for pi. Our radius is 1.5, and we're gonna square that, multiplying it by our height of five. So 1.5 times 1.5 times five, times 3.14, divide by three. You should have gotten on your calculator 11.775. Because it terminates, I'm not gonna round this. It didn't tell me to round in the problem, so I'm gonna leave it as exact as I can. Now, we're not done. We found the volume of what the paper cup holds. We're asked to find the how many cubic inches of water were in the cup, and we know that it was 80% full. So we're coming down to our water, and that is 80% full, so 80% of this value. So we're going to take 80% and write it as a decimal, and then multiply it by our volume. When we do that, we get that the volume of water in the cone, the cone cup was 9.42 cubic inches. So that's how you find the volume of a cone today, and I thank you for joining me at The Magic of Math, where we continue to master math one video at a time. I thank you for joining me today. I hope you'll come back soon and have a great day.